the village of Salatral in the semi-tropical coastal region of northern Peru. The local scourge used to be malaria, but now they've come up with an ingenious solution. They don't have the resources for the medicines needed to cure malaria, but what they do have in abundance are coconuts. This was the brainchild of microbiologist Palmira Venticilia at Lima's Institute of Tropical Medicine, using the coconuts to combat the malaria. Malaria is the deadliest tropical disease affecting Peru at the moment. We are using the coconut to produce a bioinsecticide without laboratory equipment. First you peel the coconut, then you light the wick and pour alcohol onto a piece of cotton. The insecticide bred inside the coconut will kill the mosquito larvae by ripping apart its intestines, thus interrupting the mosquito's biological cycle in order to control malaria. The coconut shell protects the bacteria during incubation, and the coconut milk contains the amino acids and carbohydrates the bacteria needs to reproduce. The beauty of the project is it enables the local communities to produce the insecticide at home. The advantage of BTI is that it doesn't kill other insects living in the breeding sites. You have to shake the coconut three times and store it in a fresh place for three to four days. Palmyra cultivates the bacteria in the lab. She's taking fresh supplies to the village of Salachal, near Pura, so the community can incubate the bacteria in the coconut. The name of this bioinsecticide, which kills 72 species of mosquitoes, is Bacillus turilensis israeliensis, because it was discovered in Israel. Salachal has been involved in the malaria project for several years. Wilfredo Toshe, the local organizer, opens his house for community education. The larva is easier to kill than the mosquito while it is still in the pond before it grows into a mosquito. This is why we are using the BTI treatment in the region. Ten years ago, the rural area of Salitral, like other villages, didn't have access to scientific knowledge. In 1990, BTI control was introduced and started to be applied by the villagers to control the development of the Anopheles larvae. Children, you should always be alert. If you see something like this in the street, you turn it upside down. Palmyra's work has been funded by the Canadian government, international health organizations, and Rivers of the World, a charity run by Ben Mathers. Well, I think the significance of the research in entomopathogenic bacteria is that it has to get beyond the laboratory and into the field. It's a cheap, easy, effective way to involve people in their communities in taking care of one of their own health issues. <laughs> Twice a week, the villagers go to nearby ponds where mosquitoes breed. Let's position ourselves to start counting the larva. We will count the larva before applying the BTI. The children will cover the extension of the pond. 
and will collect lava with their straws. Cinco pupas. Five larvae. Zero. Five weeks later, they will come back to count the larvae again, to see how much the mosquito population has gone down. The hundreds of ponds treated so far have proven that the method works. If the rest of the world follows her example, the war on malaria could be won. Their goal is to take this project to other parts of Peru and ultimately to Africa. We've discovered an easy and inexpensive way to duplicate the bacteria that can make a difference in reducing unnecessary suffering around the world. The cases of malaria and salitral have decreased thanks to the BTI project. We have to keep it going. Not doing so could be mortal.